Well, what is up, church? Come on, let's welcome everybody online. Everybody in church today. It's G Day. That means it's graduation day. Turn to the person next to you and say, did you graduate yet? G Day, graduation day. I want to take you back to when I graduated. See, I was National Honor Society. Don't mean to brag, but I was. And it was really cool because right before graduation, they did that. And they would play a song for all the people who were selected. They would pick a song that represented them. And so back in the 90s, that's when I graduated. Help me out. Tell me when you graduated. 19. Thank you. I appreciate that. Come on, let's give it up for all those people that graduated. doesn't matter the year. It just matters that you graduated or you went back to school. But I graduated National Honor Society, and they played the Bulls theme because I was a massive Bulls fan. And I thought that was pretty cool. Back in the day, but graduating 19, that's right, 1997. Here's my graduation day. Here's my senior picture. And some of you right now, you're like, wow, I can see what Danielle saw in him. 1997, that polo wearing. I mean, that photo, man, it's, it's classic. I worked at Express back in the day. I had about 20 of the exact same shirts, just different colors. Anybody else do that? You like the exact same? Sometimes I wear, a lot, I wear a lot of black, you know, color. I just like the color black. I have about 20 of, of the same black shirts. I know. It's, I need help. Please pray for me. But graduation day, I was thinking about graduation day. I was thinking about all the things that I've learned in my life. I was thinking about the timeless truths found in Scripture that really, man, when we apply these things to our lives... Man, it works. It's amazing how God's word works when you work it in your life. I mean, how many of you can identify with that? You, you, you've applied. You've obeyed God's word, and God is faithful. And I know there's some there's so like, okay, God, I believe in you. I love you. But, man, really applying all of these things to my life, there's some things that I'm not quite sure of. And, and, and man, I get it. I get it. I wasn't raised in the church, and so coming to church, I, I began downloading all of this data, all of this information about the divine, about God. And God, what do I do? How do I apply this to my life? And I, I made a decision back in the day that I was going to, to the best of my ability, try to follow God. I'm going to trip up. I'm going to make mistakes. I'm going to fail. But to the best of my ability, I'm going to take God's roadmap, his guidebook for my life, and see what happens. And so today, on graduation day... G-Day, because today, how crazy it is, I have a senior that's graduating in my home. I, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to assume that that clap is for me and mom, because, whoo, parenting is difficult. Don't be fooled. Even if you have a Christian next year, if you're a Christ follower, you're a Christian next year, man, parenting is difficult. Come on, parents, show me some love. Man, if you've got a junior hire, a leper in society, we've got one of those living with us. Man, we've got one, and, and he, he wants us to help him, but he doesn't want us to help him. And we can boss him around, but we can't boss him around. And then he works for us, and so actually we can boss him around. It's like he comes to work, go home and clean your room. You have to. You know, he won't listen to mom and dad, but he'll listen to his boss. So whatever it takes to work. But parenting, man, I'm telling you, parenting is difficult. And this year's been, it's been a tough year. I think maybe just internalizing that I have someone graduating. And we all have seasons where you're just internalizing things. You're just, wow, life happens very quickly. It happens so fast before you know it. And so I was thinking, though, on graduation day, what, what are some things that I've downloaded into my life that I could just say, man, this stuff works. Man, if you do this stuff, students, high schooler, Mom, dad, adult, grandparent, whoever you are, even if you're not a follower of Christ, I'm telling you, this stuff works. And so today I'm really just preaching my life. It's not really a sermon. It's more of a, a testimony to God's faithfulness and his goodness. And so I thought we'd, we'd talk about God's grad, G-R-A-D, God's grad. What's the grad guidelines? The first guideline I would give you is give and watch what happens. I'm just telling you, man, where I come from, where I've been, the blessings, the invisible blessings that have come my way, I'm just telling you, give and watch what happens. I mean, I can, I can tell you personally, like financially, like there's been random times in my life from high school to college where people have just come and said, here, I just wanted to bless you. And I thought, man, God's so good. God's so faithful. Yet God has reminded me 
over and over again that I made a choice. I made a choice to honor God. I made a choice when I was 16 and I got that first job. And I began, I heard something in church called a tithe. And they told me that if I tithed to God, that God would bless the rest. And so I just decided to take that deal from God. Some of us, we take God's deals. Some of us reject God's deals. But God's deals are the only ones that matter. They're the only ones that lead to the the destination we really want to go. So I I took that. And so for over 20 years, I've been trusting God. Doesn't mean anything bad has never happened. You know, like if you don't put oil in your car, I learned that when you're in high school, you'll burn the engine. (laughs) Anybody else? I know you don't want to confess that in church. Thank you in the front row. I appreciate that. Show them some love. Yeah. I learned that. Doesn't mean stuff won't happen. But give and watch what God will do. Uh, Proverbs 22 9 talks about generosity. It says that a generous person, generous people will be, read it all together, will be what, church? Blessed. Man, there's the tangible blessing of God. There's the intangible blessings of God. But generous people will be blessed. Paul uses a farmer illustration. And we kind of live in the Midwest, so we know a little bit about farming. What did Paul say about farming? He said, hey, remember this. 2 Corinthians 9, 6 through 8. He said, remember this. Whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly. And whoever sows generously will also reap generously. Each of you should give what you have decided in your heart to give, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. I'm just telling you, give and watch what happens. Some of you right now are like, oh, we're convicted. We've already taken the offering. There's not a second one. (laughs) But give, and God is able to bless you abundantly so that in all things at all times, all times when you're in college, you got no money, and your, your, your romantic date is Taco Bell and Pizza Hut combined. At all times, God will give. He'll make sure you have all that you need. And I've learned that there's kind of two types of people. There's people that are, that are blessed, and then there's people that are broke. Like you're blessed, you've trusted God, or you're broke, you just you don't have enough. I'm just telling you. Not guilting you, gracing you. I'm just telling you, this stuff works. Man, I can't, I can't explain it. Man, if you looked at my bank account, you'd go, whoa, he loves his church. Whoa, he loves coffee. <laughs> Not as much as church, but maybe close on the scale. You'd say, wow, he loves his kids. Wow, he likes shoes. A lot of shoes. But you can look at your bank account and my bank account and see what we love. I mean, it just is what it is. And so I would challenge you. What did Jesus say? Acts chapter 20, verse 35. Paul said this. He, he quoted. He said, you should remember the words of the Lord Jesus. He said, it's better, it's more blessed, it's better to, to give than receive. And parents, we know this at Christmas time. I love gifts. But when we have those toddlers opening those first Christmas gifts, and you watch the joy. And sometimes they're more excited at the wrapping and the box than the actual gift. But you see that happen and you go, whoa. It is more blessed to give than receive. I mean, don't get me wrong. I love, I love to receive. Anyone else? You love to receive? The rest of you are like, yeah, you do. You like gifts. Someone brings you a gift. You're like, don't want it. Mm-mm. No, we all like gifts. But I'm just telling you, give and watch what happens. Go God's way when it comes to your finances. And there's something, man, you're going to stiff arm this till the day you die. I'm just telling you, one day, we're going to give an account. Romans 14, 12 says that, that one day each of us will give an account. We'll stand before God, and God's going to see what we did. And he's going to see your sacrifice. He's going to see that you, you gave and you watch what happens. Sometimes we'll see it on this side of eternity. Sometimes we won't see it till the other side of eternity. Hey, if you've never experienced this blessing that I'm talking about, I'm just saying, just, just, just give and watch what happens. A principle that Daniel and I learned a couple of years ago, though, was trust God with the first. Like, give him the first. Because when you give him the first, you know that he's going to provide all the rest. Now, if you're bad at managing money... I mean, you'll still be broke. I mean, you really will if you spend all your money. But I'm just telling you to know that there's the blessing of God over your finances, over your family. Man, that's a great feeling. I've watched this for 20 years. Graduation day. Man, I'm telling you, give 
<laughs> Watch what happens. Back in high school, I told you, polo wearing, express living. That was the life. I worked at the department store express. It was structure back in the day. And I remember one time they told me I had to go back and do the inventory. And you had to go see how many shirts that we have left and all of this stuff. And I went back and did the inventory checklist. Well, graduates, let me, let me encourage you to do something. Let me encourage you to take not an inventory, although we should do that of our lives, but a friend inventory. Well, evaluate your friendships. And so give and watch what happens, but run to the right they. Because you choose your friends, you've, you've chosen your future. How many people have made bad decisions and they've said, well, I, I, was, I was with this friend. Choose wisely. You can actually show what a person is about by the friends that they choose. And right now we, we have friends. Sometimes they're friends for a season. God puts them there for a reason. Sometimes there's lifelong friends. If you can get two or three lifelong friends, I'm talking about loyal, faithful friends, man, God has blessed you in massive ways. If you've got more than that, Man, you're sitting on a gold mine. But run to the right day. What are the right day? What, what day am I talking about? I'm talking about the right day. T-H-E-Y. Tough, honest, encouraging, yes to God. Tough, honest, encouraging, yes to God. The right day always have he in the middle. He. Jesus, they always have him. The people that I want to be like, man, they have he in the middle of their life, leading their life. Do you have those tough people in your life that are just committed, man, committed to God, committed to the things of God? We need those people in our lives. I almost put always have a coach. See, I think we need tough people, coaches in our lives, in our marriage. We need, we need marriages that we look up to. We need, we need people who can hold us accountable spiritually. See, honest, honesty, we, we need people who will be honest with us. Faithful are the wounds of a friend. They can say, hey, I love you, but some of the decisions that you're making in your life, I see them taking you down a road you probably don't want to go. All of us need someone to tell us no. Turn to your neighbor and just say no. Say, I'll be that person for you. If you're married right now, that's easy. If you're sitting next to your spouse, you're like, I can do that. <laughs> no, we, we all need someone in our lives that we can say we should have someone to say no for. Say, hey, no, don't do that. We should accept that, embrace that, not as a bad thing, but as a boundary in our lives. We should have people who are honest. The godly, it says in Proverbs, are directed by honesty. Scripture, it, it points us, it shows us. Honesty shows us where we really are in our spiritual condition. I mean, are you honest with God? Are you honest with God where you are this weekend? Again, not only do we need some graduating tips, do we need some grad tips, some guidelines as we live our life, we, 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 need, we need to realize that we will graduate from this life into the next, and we will give an account of our lives. And so we need those right day that are going to help us, encourage us. Hebrews 3.13 says, encourage one another daily. Encourage. Man, who can you be encouraged by? Who can you encourage? The right day, man, they're tough. They're honest with you. They give you that feedback. Feedback is the breakfast of champions. They encourage you daily, weekly, monthly, yearly, but ultimately, again, yielded to God. Yes to God. Do you have those people in your life? Those, the right day. See, a church is, is not just a place where you come and you attend. A crowd. Jesus had the crowds. I mean, Jesus had the crowds. This place would be booming like Easter and Christmas everywhere Jesus went. But ultimately, that that circle that Jesus had, he had Peter, James, and John. He had the 12. Even God had a circle of people, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. You need people in your life who, who, who are those right day. Hey, do you have a circle of people in your life that are constantly pointing you to Christ? In the church world, we call those small groups. Here we call them circles. If you've never jumped into a circle or a serving team, man, I would encourage you to ask yourself, hey, have I really embraced the church, the, the, the place that God has for me. Some of the best friends, friendships I've developed are serving alongside of people. Do you have those right they in your life? I don't know about you, but I, I trip up. I make mistakes in life. Thinking about graduating day, graduation day and graduating, 
I remember one of the biggest things, I just wanted to make sure I didn't fall on my face. Anybody else? Sometimes when I come out here to preach, I'm like, just don't fall. If you don't fall, you're good. But I think about not falling. I think about falling. I think about me as a person. I'm directionally challenged. I get lost all of the time. And in our spiritual lives, we're going to get lost. I mean, there's going to be a season of your life. There's going to be a wilderness in your life where you just kind of get lost. It doesn't mean you don't want to follow God. It doesn't mean you don't love God. There's going to be seasons where you fall in your marriage, where you fall in your friendships, where you fall with God and, and just you, you feel like you're in a desert. And on graduation day, I want to remind you, you can always come home. Always know you can come back home. Always know that. We live in a world where people make mistakes and they think, wow, the church, I could never go back to the church. Always know that you're welcome home, that the church, aren't you thankful that the church is a home, it's a spiritual home? <laughs> Always know that. Never forget that. You make a mistake, you fall on your face. Always know that the church is a place for broken people. We make mistakes. We fall. I love Psalm 122. It says, I was glad when they said to me, let us go to the house of the Lord. Let us go to the house of the Lord. My kids, every once in a while, they're here a lot. I mean, they do the landscape at the church. They're not doing really well this year. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Sometimes we'll have them pull weeds or something like that. And they're here a lot in the summer, running little errands and stuff like that. Sometimes they're like, man... And we've been there. we got to go back. I mean, they're just honest. A lot of times they love to be here. But sometimes they're like, man, we got to go back. And I'm like, we don't got to. We get to. We don't got to. We get to. If, if church ever becomes like a checklist, you, you've forgotten that it's, man, you get to. And America, the greatest country on the planet, will be celebrating those who have sacrificed their lives. Let's just thank them in advance now, those who have served our country. Regardless of what you say, I'm a firm believer. It's the greatest country in America. God's grace has blessed us in massive ways. If it's that bad, there's a boat that leaves every day. I love you, but there's a boat that leaves every day. And a lot of people have sacrificed. A lot of people were willing to give up their lives so that we could have the freedoms that we have, the protections that we have. Man, we've been blessed with a lot. Man, we get to come to the house. I remember in high school, a home coming to the church. It was, it was the youth group. We called it the Gap. And the thing about the Gap was we ripped the logo off the Gap back in the day. I think there's copyright infringement laws on that, but I wasn't the youth pastor. That, you know, that's with him in those days, so... But we, 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 I was like, I would come, and I was like, whoa, this is like the gap. And I was like, wait a second, I've seen that logo before. And there was all of these people, all of these adults, all of these moms and dads, all of these students, that when you came in the doors, they made you feel like you were a part of the family. When you walked in the doors, they were glad that you came. They knew your name. They knew your story they were there for you. They would ask you about your spiritual life. They would encourage you to grow in that. They would encourage you to grow in the things of God. And it was a home. Man, church is supposed to be a home. You should be welcomed in your home. We should be inviting people into the home. The Apostle Paul told a young pastor, Timothy, he said, Timothy, work hard. Work hard at telling others the good news and carrying out the ministry. I mean, how do you carry out God's ministry for your life? How do you welcome people home? Because again, all of us are going to have a graduation day. And we want to make sure one day, spiritually, a lot of people are welcomed home. I want to spend the rest of my life helping people know Jesus. I think you want to do the same thing. We want to make, help people find a home and a place in heaven one day. <laughs> one of my favorites, one of my favorites. So not only give... And watch what happens. Not only run to the right they, not only know that you're welcome home, because there's those things we've got to remember. But I was thinking about this talk, and I thought, so many people are making decisions in their life. Man, where do I go to school? What do I do next? But as I was thinking about graduation day, and, and what do you do when you don't know what to do? This, this is probably the best one. It's probably the best one, Jason. 
when you don't know what to do, do what the goats do. I'm not talking about those goats. Do what the goats do, the greatest of all time. What did Abraham do when he had settled and he, and he wasn't quite sure what to do? And God spoke to him. Abraham stepped out in faith. What did Joseph do when he was facing temptation? You know, Potiphar's wife, Hotiphar, she tried to seduce him. You'll get that on Monday, Hotiphar. She was hot. She tried to seduce him. I know it's early. A lot of things are happening today. But what did Joseph do? Joseph ran. What do you do when temptation comes your way? For greed, for lust, to lie? Run. Don't make a deal with temptation. What did Moses do? Moses obeyed the word of God. What did Noah do? Noah did exactly what God told him to do. I mean, if you don't know what to do, do what the greats do. What did David do when he sinned? He humbled himself before God and received the grace and mercy of God. What did Peter do when he denied Jesus? He came back to Jesus. And Jesus was willing to be tough with Peter. If you ever think people are difficult for you or tough with you, that's because often God is, knows the potential that you have. Because sitting in the seats of every person here today, there's the person you were, there's the person you are, and there's the person that one day you can be. And there's so much potential in your life that God will, will, will crush and, and pressurize you to chip off that attitude, that negativity, that gossip, that victim mentality, because you're not a victim, you're a conqueror, you're, more, you're a conqueror in Christ. And so God will always do all of these things to chip away because so much potential is in your life. But when you don't know what to do, man, do what the goats do. Do what all of these people in the Bible have done. They came to a place where they said, God, I trust you. See, when I was in high school, I really didn't have a lot of Bible knowledge, so I didn't know where to start. And one of the Bible verses that I remember, I think a lot of the goats knew this, knew something like this. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. It said, trust in the Lord with what? All your heart. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding in all. Let's say all together. One, two, three. In all your ways, acknowledge him. And what? He shall direct your paths. So trust. What decisions do you need to make? What things do you need to do? Well, you need to. Trust God. Trust God he'll work out your marriage situation. Trust God that he'll work out your parenting. Trust God that he'll work out your job situation. Trust God that he'll work out your sickness. Trust God that he'll save your friend. Trust God that he'll help your family. Trust God that he'll protect your children. Trust in the Lord, always. <laughs> Lean not on your own understanding. See, in the book of Kings, a lot of kings, a lot of people did they did their own thing in their own eyes. Well, this is what I think. This is, what I, this is how I see it. Hey, lean. That, that, that image is putting all your weight on something. See, I weigh the same now as I do in high school. And a few pounds more. But lean. I made a decision. God, I won't do it perfect every time. Actually, God, I'll mess up a lot of times. But I'm going to lean my life on you. Trust, lean, acknowledge, acknowledge God in all your ways. I'm telling you, God's word works when we work it in our lives. Watch what happens. Give and watch what happens. Start doing that in your life, student. Mom, dad, watch what God will do. Run to the right day. Those people that God will place in your life. And we're going to need to do friend and Tories from time to time. We're going to need to ask, are these people tough people, really committed to God? Are these people honest? Are they encouraging me in the things of God? Are they ultimately saying yes to God? Are they willing to give me some feedback even when I don't want to hear it? Man, find the right day because you choose your friends. You have chosen your future. And when you fall, when you make mistakes, always know you're always welcome home. And if you ever find yourself, you don't know what to do. Just say, what would a great leader do? What would the goats do in this divine book? What have they done? Well, oftentimes, they've trusted God. They've leaned not on their own understanding, 
they've acknowledged God in all their ways. And God has directed their paths. When Joshua was sent to conquer Jericho, they didn't go with the normal battle plan. God said, send the praise and worship out, circle the city for seven days, go around it, blow the trumpets. Then these walls that seem so difficult for you to conquer, you just blow the trumpets and the walls will come down. It was a reminder that a lot of times we're going to try to work ourselves, especially in the American culture, we're going we're to work ourselves into success. We're, we're, we're self sufficient, man. We, we're, we, we know how to do it. We know the right thing to do. We got all the gifts and we got all the talents, but oftentimes when we just humble ourselves and say, God, I don't know what to do, but I trust you. Those walls came down because it wasn't the normal plan. In this journey, maybe point five, I would add, is say, hey, don't expect to do the normal things if you're going to serve God because God's going to send you on a faith journey and it's the greatest journey ever. Hey, would you bow with me in prayer? Father, I thank you. Today is its graduating day. Many students are going to be graduating at schools all around our area, all around the nation. And Lord, today as we look at your guidelines for graduating today, God, things that just work when we trust you, when we put our hope in you. God, when we see that when we give, we can just watch what you'll do in our lives, the blessing that comes our way. God, something today, I need to just trust you and know that you'll do way more your way in their lives and in my life when I trust you with my stuff. I can't take it with me. Lord, may today many be reminded of the right day, the friendships in their life are going to take them to their future. That they would know that no matter how far they fall, what mistakes they make, that the church, the house of God, God, you always want us to know that we're welcome in your house. And God, when we get to that season of our life where we don't know what to do, we're unsure. God, may we do what the goats have done, the greatest of all times, the Abrahams, the Isaacs, the Jacobs, the Noahs, the Peter, the Apostle Paul, the Titus, the Isaiah, the Jeremiah. God, they trusted you and they put their hope in you. Hey, I wanna ask you a question with every head bowed, every eye closed today. If you just be honest, if you're here and you've never put your trust in Christ for your sins to be forgiven, one day we're gonna have a graduation day. All of us will give an account of our life to God. Hey, have you been made right with God? Do you know that your sins have been forgiven? That's why Jesus went to the cross. God loved us so much that he came down, walked down the staircase of heaven so that one day he can take you to heaven with him. He'll prepare a place for you. He has, a, he has an unbelievable plan for your story. But maybe you've been in church and you know about God, but you've never, you've never really made this decision or you have these doubts and you're like, God, how do I really trust you? You just trust that Jesus, his death, his burial, his resurrection paid for your sins. And if you receive that free gift, that's what it is, it's a free gift. God will call you his son, his daughter and you can be made right with God. I wanna give you that opportunity to do that right here, right now. Father, you see those that are sitting here today. God, you know the depths of our hearts. You know that some in here, some online, really, if they were honest about their spiritual condition, they are really far from you. Some have been in church, they've tried to do the right thing, but Christianity is not about doing a bunch of good stuff. It's about receiving the grace of God that our forgiveness comes through the work of Christ on the cross. And so, Lord, I know that some need to make a decision today to give their life to you right here in this moment. If you need to do that, you make this your prayer. Just say, Heavenly Father, I thank you that Jesus died for me on the cross. Today, I receive him as my personal Savior to know that my sin has been paid for and I've been forgiven. I receive the free gift. God, one day when I graduate from this life, I want to step into eternity with you. I want to live in a home in heaven with people that I love who made a decision to follow you. And Lord, the rest of my life, you have given me a gift. May my life honor you and be a gift back to you as I choose to follow Christ faithfully. Today, God, I'm receiving Christ as my Savior. Lord, fill me with your Holy Spirit. Lead me all the days of my life. And today, let me be reminded that I got one life to live for you. 
may I do it to the best of my ability. Hey, if you prayed that prayer, would you just lift up your hand? One, two, three. Just shoot it up real high, real fast. Thank you. God sees you. Anybody else? Thank you in the back. God, you see those that are making a decision for you today. Though Some are returning home. Father, I pray that you do unbelievable things in their life today, Lord, on graduation day. Lord, we love you. We thank you for those that made a decision to join your team. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Everybody said amen.